Alright, what's up guys, welcome back to another Grand Cross video, and today we're going to be doing our tier list video as usual, uh, every time the new month does come around, and uh, I like to always do it on the third day of the month, if I can do it, if the occasion comes around, it's because that's when the game did release, and today is no exception, because it's been six months today since the game has been out, and... Uh, We've done six of these now, so we're now making our way up to uh, well, about halfway throughout the year. Well, I guess the year in the in the six month anniversary type of thing. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna be starting off kind of changing things around first because there are quite a lot of changes. Uh, but one thing I should say as well, if you're new, subscribe because we're doing Grand Cross content daily. But also, this tier list isn't just based on PvP. Um, if you're thinking this is yeah based on PvP, it's not. It's more or less overall. Uh, Everything right gameplay if there's a final boss activated at the time uh, just certain challenges uh, Whenever the, the actual month has an actual event or just PvE obviously for that That's what we're kind of basing on so it's not just PvP Otherwise certain characters will be a bit higher even though we're still counting PvP quite a bit because it is a big part of the game So you're gonna see with Lost Vane obviously um, him being in a, a, a tier so We're gonna make some changes I think we should start off with the S tier. So now, since it's been about two months, three months even, since Lost, uh, since, well, I guess, Demon Betty, Otis, and Lee has been running around, uh, with the new addition, obviously, we'll do this at the end, uh, they are going to be moving down. So, Lilia and both, Lilia and also Demon Betty, Otis are kind of a bit, they're still good, you can still pop off, but I feel like with the current meta, um, they're definitely a second best team, and not really a must use, because, uh, well, I mean, if you look at these guys, like King, Gofal, uh, Eskinor, these, these like in literally like the best meta team right now. You either having like all three of them or literally at least one or two of them in, in the team because how much of a difference did you make? Okay, changes to the A tier now. I think we're gonna move down Eren, even though he's still kind of usable. But I think is um no one's really gonna have him to a high level or like you know like CC wise because he. You have to actually spend money for his cross because that kind of does hold him back quite a bit. So most people just have him 6-6 six, six with no cross max, or at least the ones they get for free. But pretty much uh, Eren, um, right now, it's somewhat usable because you obviously can't evade, which means um, you're pretty much avoiding every single damage. But in an ult rush team meta kind of right now, uh, if you are literally evading, the only thing that can damage him is literally ult ult ultimates. So you're going to die anyway. That being said, he's a blue, but still, um, the fact uh, yesterday, well, I guess uh, last month, where it was pretty much just mono red, um, he was obviously a lot more usable. But now, there's more diverse colors, so you got blue and red now, even green. So, yeah, pretty much I think he's, he deserves an A tier. Mikasa is going to stay. I still think she's quite good. If you do, if you do get your all off, um, there isn't really too much the other team can do about it, because she can do so much damage. But maybe I'll drag it down. Uh, no, we'll leave it just because of ult. When she does survive long enough and her ult does get off, um, it can, if you have it to a high level, of course, and most positively it can one-shot, uh, literally, Lost Fame Mediotis. Then when you do that, the whole team's pretty much dead because you've got your, your passes stacked up, you've got your buffs. Um, the pretty much only thing they can do is literally remove it, and if they can't, well, they're screwed. Valentia, I'm going to move down. Uh, once again, this is, I know it's not a PvP tier list, but obviously a PvP is a big part of this, this month's tier list because obviously this character's in the game, right? He kind of shuts down everything. But uh, Valenti, not really using too much now. I think maybe next month when we do get hill raids, or if it is this month, we'll do it next month. She might go up a little bit because um, right now you're not really using her in anything. You can use her, that's the thing, but you're not really using her in... Um, the only thing you're using her in for, I think it's literally the Lilia raid. Uh, you could still use her in PvP, but once again, she's a, she's a, a red... Or she's a green, so she's going to die pretty quick to Lost Vane. And, uh, yeah, she wants to try and stay alive, obviously, because of her passive. But still, I think um, she's not that usable anymore. I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, still usable, the fact she's in B tier. So, we're moving Hauser down. Um, I think his days are over in PvP. If you are using, uh, like, a, a mono or, like, um, a Pierce team, uh, you're not going to be using him. You kind of just use Lilia, Medi, and probably an Escanor. Pretty much his only use is probably farming. And even then, you could kind of use other people like D Mediolus, like Escanor. Uh, you could even bring the new Lost Fame Mediolus. But still, I think um, you could still use him. PvE content-wise, he's still kind of decent. Raid bosses you're not using, so I can see him falling off quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, still kind of an okay character. Merlin. 
probably going to go up. Um, not only is she very usable in mostly every single quest, because she does have a freeze. Um, she can freeze every, almost every PvE character, uh, depending on what the boss is. Sometimes you can't freeze them uh, to the next stage. But you also can freeze and do double damage with her actual pass, or I guess uh, her card that does 200% extra damage. Uh, good for one raid boss. Good for, uh, I guess, training cave, but we're not really taking into account training cave. I'm still just going to add that in. Uh, but also, she is kind of meth, not meth up, but she's still a really good counter to the actual, the kind of one of the best teams in PvP right now, or most of these teams, which is uh, King, Lost Vein, uh, Jotha, and or Merlin. So, the fact she can disable recovery skills, stop the King from healing, and removing debuffs, you could literally, you know, the fact you can freeze on a, tier, on a tier 1 card, on like King, who has to be a tier 2, she's kind of usable right now. It's either, you're going to see either Red or Green Merlin, and uh, if you do see the red one, you kind of worried a bit because uh, she can ruin your day. Deanne's also moving up. So the reason why for Deanne is uh, I think she's actually probably... I think she's on the best team. I think literally in PvE... Oh, sorry, PvP. She is on one of the best teams because uh, she can taunt and long out the fight to where uh, Lost Vein can actually just ult and kill everyone. And uh, yeah, she's actually pretty good. She taunts at the start of the match. She actually um, puts a shield up, so it's kind of hard to get through to that shield and then start attacking Mediodis, who pretty much um, is going to ult rush and kill your whole team. So yeah, I think for her right now, PvE, she's actually quite good as well because um, once again, she's taunting. So you're like, you can like kind of just build up other ults for Escanor and any other character. Also, yeah, just overall stuff. She's kind of sick. Plus, I think even in uh, the new Lilia Awaken event, um, you could use her. So she taunts at the start and then you just kind of focus uh, your whole other team and she would pretty much just die uh, eventually. And yeah, she, she, honestly, she's a really good character. Okay, moving down, Green Hellbrum. Yes, he's still used in guild bosses, but that's kind of the only thing he's used in. We used to use him in raid bosses for like all death matches, but now people have gone towards Arthur. And uh, yeah, there's no real point of using him. Literally, it's only for, I think, guild bosses. Other than that, you could probably go, go towards uh, Guild Thunder, the green one. But uh, overall, he's kind of fallen off a bit. Uh, Lilia, we are moving down, so this is the green one. Once again, she was usable in PvP. Now I don't think she is. Mainly because you need sort of like a... Um, you need some sort of healing, you need to remove ultimate gauge, and she's just not doing that. Uh, you probably w rather use the blue Lilia, and pretty much her one of her uses was to decrease uh, attack related stats or attack in PvP. But now that's kind of useless. Once again, we don't have a 6-6 for free. So I think, yeah, just overall, just don't use her. I'd rather invest into the blue Lilia, who's overall just a bit better. And uh, even in PvE content, yeah, she can low, low attack related stats. Yes, yeah, she can uh, reduce, reduce um, I think it's their defense or like increase damage taken. But overall, uh, you probably to rather use blue lilio it's it's just it's kind of a no choice really okay i think that about does it i think yeah maybe slater slater might be go up a bit i will put him in the c right now because um currently we don't have hell bosses but i think when hell bosses do come out he might be a bit better but i think you're not going to use him pvp you're not going to use story mode because um they do feel ultimate gauges literally the only thing you use them for is the red demon and uh there are obviously a lot of better choices now you can just use si aaron here we've got six six for free uh you're not going to have this guy six six because if you are you probably wasted some coins but yeah uh you can use him but probably not you're probably rather be use someone else to be honest Okay, time to touch up some of the SRs because a lot of things have changed now. Obviously, a few of these guys you can see here are more of a, um, you know, a fourth slot character to where they can buff up people. Uh, I'm going to move Elizabeth down all the way to don't use no more. Uh, she was usable in PvP. You could use her to heal up 10% every time you take damage. But at now, at this point in the game, with Lost Vein, uh, in PvP at least, you're just, you're, the healing's not enough. You need you need some orb removal. You need, like, uh, the Red King. You need someone to stop doing damage right and healing is just not enough so she's kind of unusable plus uh we just got a better healers right now like still you probably just rather use blue lilia and for an sr she does lose out on quite a bit of stats so cc wise you probably end up losing so yeah just just don't use that character anymore uh sr elizabeth so this is the one you probably use just literally for the red demon uh even at this point there are other other people you can use now free ssr erin uh or sr erin so yeah other than that she's still obviously usable but i think when hell raids come out she you can't freeze i believe so you might not want to use her uh and pretty much yeah she she's kind of just fallen off quite a bit now her only use is literally the red demons and even then there's other better people you can use green liz uh we'll leave her in the in the c tier again you could use her if you wanted to in a just, just a farming team and some story quests, but other than that, she's not really usable. But once again, the fact you can use her on a farming team is somewhat redeemable, because uh, otherwise she'd be in don't use. 
Arthur, I did put up, I did put him up before because he was a good association. But right now, I think with the banners we've had for, like, I guess, for the last six months, um, we're gonna move him down to the don't news. Uh, you're probably just better off literally upgrading this alpha. If obviously if you don't have this alpha six six, you probably want to use this one because um, it is a good association for Merlin. But I mean, once again, like I said, most people do have alpha six six because he is in every single banner. You can buy him in the coin shop. Um, he's such an easy character to get 6-6. Six, six. Probably the first person you should get 6-6. Six, six. And, uh, yeah, other than that, Mono Red, most people probably use Mono Red, so he's already leveled up. Uh, you, yeah, like I said, just don't use this guy. Probably use this one. Yeah, Twigger, you can't really use no more. Uh, he was obviously in PvP. Uh, you could use him in the fourth slot, but now there's no actual point because uh, you're just going to get slapped. Say for Grimo, uh, if you're using Grimo right now in the fourth slot for PvP, you're going to get slapped. <laughs> literally, like, you can't use any of these guys anymore. Literally, the only fourth character you can use is probably Red King or um, Merlin at this point. Vivian will move it down. Uh, she can. Literally, her only usage is the Silver Ultimates. But uh, do you really need to Silver Ultimates in most turns? You can just kill her. There's no point in investing into her. Yes, you should invest into her because you're going to need her for, uh, what's it like I said, um... You need her for reverse stages, as she's somewhat usable in the training cave, but still, we're not really counting those, because uh, if we were counting count the training cave and also reverse stages, I guess every single rare will be up a rank, because uh, you, you're supposed to use them. But yeah, pretty much don't use her. Blue Jericho, uh, you're not really using her for association anymore. There's no point of using her. Uh, she does heal, I think. Oh no, she does increase attack related stats, I think, for blues. But, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll leave her. I, I'm pretty sure that's what she does. Yeah, so she increases attack related stats by 10%. Which you might use if you're doing like a, a full mono blue farming team. Uh, like I can see you using Lilia. You could use uh, Demedios and then probably Gila. Uh, you could use them for people to do uh, like a little... Oh, like, a, like just clearing quests. So we'll leave her in there for now. Uh, Kane still usable because uh, uh, PvE death matches is still somewhat good. Dreyfus. Uh, he's an association for some characters. But I think you might as well just not level him up. Uh, other than that, you kind of just release attack related stats. It does have a decent passive, but you're not using that for PvE. You're not using that for PvP. Uh, most things, you're not really using him. Guild Thunder, we're going to move down as well. Uh, like I said, you're not using him PvP no more. You can't. Uh, so, other than that, you're probably using him for the Guild Boss to get the attack related stats. Maybe in PvE content, you want to really increase the attack related stats again. But, um, or attack by like 40%, 30%, whatever he does. But still, um, not that usable anymore. Weinhardt, I think does he say his name? Uh, once again, he's only usable in an actual, like, a, a farming team uh, with, like, Dean Mediolis. But even still, you're not really using it for the character. You're using it for his passive, which is literally in a full slot for farming. Other than that, you're probably not using it for anything else because you can't use him in PvP. Okay, so that about does it. So one thing we're going to do is this. Now, you might think, what the hell am I set we're talking about here? We're moving up Deldry. Now, I did use Deldry last month when uh, Lost Vane wasn't out, but she was very usable not a high rank because uh she will lose that on cc because uh she uh doesn't have any cosmetics so she's gonna lose that in quite a bit of cc but still the fact you can somewhat still use her even now with a loss against lost fane it's somewhat usable you could taunt um you could if you get lucky enough you could literally um you could charm the lost fane and that means Lost Fane can no longer use his AoE card, which is a massive deal because his AoE card is basically an ultimate, especially if he gets that to a tier 3. But the fact, yeah, it's she's still RNG, so if anything, she's like D+, but I wouldn't say don't use her. I wouldn't recommend using her, to be fair, because um, she's such an RNG character, you're not going to use in the future. You could use in PvP, um, or PvE, but her charm only works in PvP, so other than that, it's not really useful. But um, the fact you could you could use her in PvE, or I guess PvP, um, she's going to stay in this tier. But yeah, could. Not recommended, could. Now, essentially, you could say that about for most characters. But I think if you look at these people here, um, you could use them in PvP. But they're going to get slapped. And um, I think she's the only one who could be used in PvP if you compare it to these guys here. Okay, now that's out of the way. Obviously, a lot of changes happened today because... Um, well, Lost Fane does exist now, so let's get into it. Uh, Mon Speed, the green one. So this is the better one. We're going to put into B tier. Uh, the main reason why is you have to get him to 6-6 six, six for him to be somewhat better. Because uh, he actually does add more ignites the more ultimate levels you do have. But he is no, he's only in the coin shop. So he's going to be very hard to get 6-6. Six, six, but you could get him there. Uh, other than that, maybe you put him here. 
Now, the main thing about the green... Actually, no, we'll put him there. Because uh, if you do, he, his whole gimmick is to do uh, more damage. His weak point cards, which um, can obviously kill quite a lot of cards. And if you have, like I said, if you have seven Ignites on, you can probably one-shot someone with the tier 3 card, regardless of who it is. So, uh, I think he sits well in here. Um, not only for PvP, somewhat use him on PvE. I guess, like I said, you could literally just ult rush him and then uh, use a weak point card and you kind of slapped him. Uh, Red Mon Speed, kind of the same thing here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using him, but you could. Uh, okay, now this one's debatable. I, I honestly, I say don't use him. Um, he's a character that is, once again, you have to get 6 6 to be somewhat usable, like Eren, uh, but Eren's a lot better. Um, they're kind of similar, actually, because um, he does increase his, he does uh, give ultimate gauge, similar to how like, Mediolus does it. But then also, his, um, if you're using him PvP, you're going to get beaten straight away. If you're using him PvE, there is no way of him getting, um, his weak point card to do any damage and as you can see eight percent is quite low um the only way to do it is literally to ignite uh with his ultimate but then at that point you'd rather use someone else so the fact you have to literally get ult to be usable and even then afterwards he's not even that good unlike you Aaron, um he can't ult and they do some crazy damage all right next one uh obviously derriere who uh you will see a video pretty soon of me trying to pull her not a good one but she is s literally a must use she is the best pve character no doubt about it very usable in pvp um obviously her main her main gimmick is literally to buff up as much as she can as she can i believe depending on how many turns it gets to uh her her actual passive is like unlimited every turn you, she gets a she attacks she's just gonna get a buff and you could do that forever i believe if you somehow survive long enough um and then also she evades so against lost lane mediodis you could survive and then pretty much owe him um, and then also, yeah, she does buff herself off. Um, her ultimate is just godly. Amplify with the buffs. She's going to do some damage. It's insane. So, green dairy area, we're going to put into B. I think it's B, or, it's B or C. It depends on the week, to be honest. Because if you look at her cards, she has this card here. Basically, what Lost Fane and Eskinaut does have. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It depletes. Okay, so this is actually kind of usable. Since you are removing ultimate gauge, um, obviously, you could go up to three. This is onto one target, so... It's basically a Merlin. Not too bad. Like, we see what Merlin can do. Not too bad. Then this one is basically like Lost Vein. I guess an Eskinaut, but AoE card. So it fills ultimate gauge. So she is going to be kind of rushed out kind of quick. The damage itself isn't too high. But, um, you know, if she does get her off, it's kind of sick. But her only thing that really holds her back is, as yes, you can see, she had, does have an Amplifier on her Combo Star and Ultimate. There's no way of actually getting buffs. So you kind of have to run a go for like an off with her. So she does kind of limit in that way. So I think for that reason, we're going to put her into C tier. But to be fair, it, on a certain week, like look, no enemies can, uh, enemies can't fill the ultimate gauge when moving skills. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, decrease attack rate range, decrease damage of the range attacks in PP. Works well against Mediodis. But the thing is, like I said, it, I say on, on like a good week, on a good PP week, you could probably use her. But uh, on most weeks, you'd probably rather not... Um, for, like I said, the fact you have to use someone to buff her up just to get this to do some damage is kind of rubbish, to be honest with you. Uh, so PvE-wise, you can have to make a team just around her, rather than this dairy area where you can just go into it, any team she wants to and just pop off. Alright, I guess the moment everyone's been waiting for, uh, obviously Lost Fane. If there was an, a tier above S tier, uh, he would be here. Literally a really good character for raid bosses, a really good character for just farming if you wanted to. Uh, but also, PvP, just if if you, if you don't have this guy in PvP, uh, you cannot play PvP. Literally, it's it's, it's unwinnable. Uh, I mean, you could use Blue Team Medios and do like a, a, a Pierce team. But still, uh, this guy just, it's unreal how much damage you can do. And the thing is, if this guy's 6-6, six, six, you're champion 1. Um, even if you have him at 1-6, at if you have good gear on him and you get his uh, tier 3 card, which he's going to get quite a lot because all he has to do is get a crit. Um, you're, that's basically an ult. It's it's actually unreal how much damage you can do. And uh, yeah, um, just, the, just expect to see this guy every game is actually quite unreal. And then Fraudrin. Now, this one is very, very debatable. So I'm going to put him into... I'm going to put him into C. And I'm going to put him next to Aaron because they're kind of the same thing here. Now, Fraudrin obviously has a pretty good ability. So he extorts attack and defense. Not too bad. It's only to one enemy. Then um, he also removes buffs. So uh, PVE wise, you won't. People don't really buff themselves in um, PVE, so just kind of unusable. Uh, but PVP really good, especially if it's like a mono red, because you literally a tier two card. 
remove all the buffs is, is actually insane. And then this one as well, not the best thing, but it does remove ultimate gauge, which you can't really complain about. But still, the fact um, we're putting him into C tier. So the reason why I'm putting the C tier is because, once again, you have to, like like this Eren here, you have to have him 6-6. Six, six. Now, why do you have to have him 6-6? Six, six? Well, it's because he does have this. Enemies who have lower CC than Fraugen will not gain ultimate gauge for two turns. This ability is actually kind of broken. Now, the reason why is because, well, Old Rush team right now is very messed up. In the future, you're not going to see too much of him. You Actually, to be fair, you're not probably not going to see him. The reason why is because, one, you have to get UR gear. Really good UR gear. You have to buy all his cosmetics, and you have to get him 6-6, six, six, around 4 point, like 4-6, 5-6, six, six, for him to actually have a high enough CC to where he's actually going to start sealing off the ultimate gauge. Because other than that, if you don't have 6-6, six, six, if you don't have all the cosmetics, if you don't have all, if you don't have full UR gear, if you don't have all the best stats and substats on the UR gear, he's not going to do too much. And uh, yeah, pretty much other than that, he's actually quite a mediocre character. But still, he um, if you did have every single one, he'd probably be here for PvP. Actually, no, he'd probably be here. Because he's not that usable in, uh, yeah, he's literally not usable in raid bosses. He's not that usable in PVE. Literally, PVP might be one of the best characters if you, if you did have the best stuff for him. But that's quite a lot to invest into a Fraudrin. Or is it, is, does he count as Dreyfus? So there's quite a lot of resources to invest into for him just to work. Um, unlike Eren, who like, yeah, you have to have 6-6. Six, six, but he kind of works sometimes. That's my point. Anyway. All right, so that's going to wrap up today's video. Um, probably a long one. Uh, I have to edit it down quite a bit, obviously, because I uh, can see it's around tw 30 minutes. Wow, okay. So I'm going to edit it down quite a bit. But um, yeah, that's the tier list for today. Well, that's the tier list for the month. Uh, hopefully, you guys did enjoy. Uh, I guess most people expected this one here, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, quite a lot of changes. A lot of things did move down since, uh, well, since Lost Vader's a character. Like I said, it's not just PvP. It is PvE. But obviously, PvP does play a big part into it, which is why, uh, to be fair, most PvE characters work well PvP and vice versa, to be fair. So um, you, you kind of see this here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and peace.